Greetings, friends at Fair Planet. My name is Jim Ayala, and I'm the founder of Hybrid Network here in the Philippines. Here's a picture of my, a map of my country. For the last 11 years, we have been fighting to end energy poverty. And at the same time, we have been creating green jobs and also addressing climate change. And for 10 years, 10 out of the 11 years, Fair Planet has been a partner and you have helped us tremendously to advance our work. So today, I would like to share with you a quick update on what's happening here in the Philippines and how your support has been making a difference. I hope you can see the slideshow here. So it's entitled Fair Planet Plus Hybrid at 10 years. In those 10 years, we have built together a gridless solar electricity network, which is transforming rural communities. So let me give you a little bit of background. First, we are addressing energy poverty, which affects 20 million rural Filipinos. That's about 20% of the whole country. And for these people, as you know, without electricity, quality of life is very poor. At the same time, without energy, development is impossible. Imagine schools with no sound systems, businesses without computers, pumps without electricity. And worst of all, our clients, because they have no electricity, find other, other forms of energy and pay for it. When they use kerosene, it's very expensive and polluting. And when they buy dry cell batteries, like EverReady or Duracell batteries, they are paying 4,000 times more per kilowatt hour than if they bought from the grid. 4,000 times more. That is an energy penalty. Now, in our country, which is an archipelago with, um, with over uh, 7,600 islands, uh, the electrification approach is fundamentally flawed. First of all, the approach is to, uh, to, to extend the grid, but that won't work because we have so many islands and mountains and it's very expensive to extend the grid. And the people at the periphery of the grid have very unstable power, especially when typhoons hit. But even worse, the carbon trajectory is getting worse. The government, when they power these islands and mountain communities, use diesel powered or oil powered generators. In fact, renewable energy in the Philippines is falling. You know, there's, there are more and more coal plants being built. So there is something fundamentally wrong with the electrification approach in the Philippines. At hybrid, we have a totally different solution. We are building a nationwide gridless solar electricity network. Think about communications. Before, we had landlines. And in order to make a phone call, you needed to be connected to the landline network. But when cellular phones came in, it, you didn't need to be connected to landlines. You could go wireless. So that's the same thing that we're doing in electricity. Why connect to the grid? You don't need to connect to the grid. You can go gridless. So let me tell you a little bit about this nationwide gridless solar network that we're building. It's got four components. Here's a map of the whole country. And the H's that you see are the hybrid solar hubs that we are planning over the next four years. And our network has four components. Number one, appropriate technology. Solar powered uh, technology, which is really designed and built for rural communities. And this comes with a battery. Secondly, last mile value chains. <clears throat> we have to get our products out to the very rural communities. So we need to build value chains, distribution systems that get all the way to the very, very last mile, to that last remote community. Thirdly, we are designing our programs to be replicable so that we can approach partners and ask them to join our last mile value chains so that we can reach every corner of the country. And finally, in order to support all of this, we are establishing sustainable solar hubs. These are our offices in the field. 
once we put this in place, then every remote community, whether it's a farmer in this field or a fisherman on this boat or a mountain community or an island community will have access to electricity and appliances. What do we hope to achieve? We hope to get to see rural transformation at scale. You see here the SDGs that we work on. We tend to work on about 12 out of the 17 SDGs. At the same time, the network that we're building needs to be sustainable and scalable so that when we reach these communities, the work will continue. The electricity will be provided for years to come. So that's our overall mission. Let me tell you a little bit about each component. Part number one is appropriate technology. We have the panels, we have the batteries, and we have super efficient applications. Our TVs and lights and fans only use 10 to 20% of the typical power consumed by typical products, which are AC. So we have super efficient applications. And those applications are used for a whole range of rural use cases. So we have the lights and the battery charging in households. We have equipment for micro enterprises. We have lights for farmers and for fishermen. Our lights attract more fish. And we also have solar powered ice machines so that the fish don't rot. We have lit up schools to improve education. And we are also supporting last mile healthcare workers. So we have a whole range of products. These products uh, go up in price and go up in size as they go up in size. Uh, and you can see here that while we have started with portable lamps and fans and home systems, we have plans to go bigger, to, to, to create solar generators that can power businesses, multimedia systems, ICT systems, ice machines, desalination, community water systems. So over time, we have started increasing the amount of solutions that we can give to different communities. So that's the first part of the platform, our appropriate technology. The second part, our last mile value chains. What do we mean by this? Well, we create different value chains for different segments. For example, we have partnerships with microfinance institutions where our people can demo to the lady and we have products that are just specifically for the use of these communities. We have financing, which is provided by microfinance institutions. And we have our people delivering and installing the systems, training the users, and if anything goes wrong, providing service to them. This uh, is some, these are products which are purchased with a loan and paid. So this is a, a, a market-based system. This system is already in place and scaling and it addresses the household segment. Another kind of value chain is the one that we've done together with you. This is CSR or philanthropy where our partnership uh, are with healthcare workers. So this is our last mile value chain for the healthcare segment. We partner with the government and with an NGO. The NGO is the federation of all of the community health workers. We call them BHWs. And together with the government, we have come up with a partnership where we take special products by Niwa, Sun King, and Omnivoltaic, which allows the community health workers to move around at night to charge their phones, charge their equipment, uh, charge the uh, health stations. Uh, the donation was enabled by Fair Planet. Uh, we made the deliveries to the, to the um, different uh, healthcare groups together with the NGO partner uh, who also help organize and distribute. And anything that goes wrong with any system, we are able to fix it within three to seven days. So this is an example of a last mile value chain, which is based on philanthropy. Uh, and it's also in place and scaling. Our NGO partner, the Barangay Health Worker Federation has 250,000 members. And we are excited 
to bring solar equipment to all of these members all over the country. The third component of our platform would be programs by user segment that are replicable and scalable. And you can see from this slide that our programs address in the middle, you see the end user segments, whether it's household segment, institutional segments like schools and clinics, the livelihood sector, like farmers and fishermen and shops, or community services, uh, for example, water system, water, water, um, you know, water uh, 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 supply, or ice plants, or emergency situations when there are typhoons. For each of these segments, we have programs that are either market-based, where an end user buys it and a lender finances it, or CSR or philanthropy-based, where a donor funds it and we facilitate the donation. In both cases, we have programs that are gonna be sustainable and effective. With that in place, we now need the fourth component of our, of our platform, which are our solar hubs. This is an example of one of the solar hubs that was funded by Fair Planet. You lent us the money to build this solar hub and about seven other solar hubs. Each of those solar hubs uh, has a solar hub manager and a team of solaristas who work with solutionistas in the field to market and, and train and install and service all of our systems. So these solar hubs are the ones on the ground that are making sure that the value chains are in place. So that is a little bit of a summary on the gridless solar network. Let me tell you a little bit about how we are now uh, looking at results. What have we accomplished over the last 10 years? Well, our cumulative impact until uh, December 2020 has been 370,000 people with improved energy access, 370,000 Filipinos. These Filipinos were able to generate 120 million addition hours, 120 million hours of renewable energy lighting and charging. With this, we, they were able to reduce their CO2, the greenhouse gases, by 130,000 metric tons. And they, they were able to save over 170 million pesos in, uh, in energy. Uh, that's more than $3.5 million. What are we targeting by 2025? In terms of reduced energy poverty, we want 2.5 million people to be enjoying uh, improved energy access. Uh, that would be 470,000 households, and we want them to reduce their CO2 by 315,000 tons, 315,000 tons. And with respect to green jobs created, that would be about 2,600 green jobs. And together, we can do this with your help. But we cannot just be talking about impact. We also need to talk about an ecosystem play that is sustainable and scalable. So over the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, if, if you see uh, the last five years, uh, we had gone from 10 million pesos in revenue up to 62 million pesos in 2019. In 2020, it went down a bit, about 15% because of COVID. But this year, 2021, we are increasing to 158 million. We are tripling in size on the back of the solar hubs that are being, uh, that are growing. So you see here the progress that we've made. In 2019, all of our hubs became profitable and we were supposed to expand it in 2020, but because of the pandemic, we slowed down. But this year with all solar hubs profitable, we are increasing the number of hubs. So we will be moving to 10, 10 hubs and full enterprise profitability. That will allow us to continue to grow over the next few years as we move to 35 solar hubs by 2025. So it's an exciting time uh, for hybrid. We could not have reached this point without your support. Um, you, uh, most of you would know that uh, you have been providing loans, four-year loans for each of our solar hubs. 
in 2021, our target, uh, we're, our, our theme is SAIL 2021. And SAIL stands for sustainability and impact sa lahat. Sa lahat means for everyone. So our key goals are financial sustainability for the entire enterprise, which we should achieve with 177 million in gross sales. But at the same time, we want to see impact for more people. So we are targeting 180,000 people with improved energy access. This could not be done without the leadership of the team. Uh, I want to introduce very quickly uh, some of our key team members. There's myself as the founder and CEO, uh, and we have Randy Landicho, our general manager of Solar Hub Operations. We have Cherry Havate. She is our in charge of our shared services. And we have Julius Bautista in charge of our human resources. And together we have a really good uh, leadership team and uh, a big group of uh, solaristas working in the field. And our culture can be summarized uh, by the three figures on the right. You see at the top, this is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. So our people, our, our culture is what we call TQM. And it doesn't mean total quality management. What it means is Mother Teresa, that's the T, we want people with the heart of Mother Teresa who work with the poor and love the poor. Q is the guy in the middle, that's Don Quixote. Don Quixote has this crazy dream, this impossible dream. So our people wake up every morning with this crazy impossible dream of ending energy poverty. And the M stands for Marines. We want our, our people work together like Marines, even though the situation is very difficult, the terrain is very harsh, we are able to get the job done and we operate as a team, just like the Marines. So TQM, Mother Teresa meets Don Quixote meets the Marines. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you to give you a little bit of flavor for the type of people here in the Philippines. So at the end of the day, why partner with hybrid? What have we been doing together? I think that you, Fair Planet and hybrid share a common approach. We are together at the forefront of a fundamental shift to a new paradigm for the future. We have been able to show multidimensional measurable impact for our clients who number 380,000 and that number is growing. We have already partnered with many rural uh, civil society organizations that have uh, rural footprints, rural networks, and we are expanding with them to thousands of locations. And this is all supported by our solar hubs, which are building the last mile value chains, which is the replicable operating platform. Think again about wireless phones, we are building a gridless solar network. And finally, the, what we are doing is sustainable and scalable. So this is why, this is how we work at Hybrid. I think uh, Fair Planet and Hybrid, you know, we have a common mission and a common approach to ending poverty, energy poverty, to helping with the climate and also creating green jobs. So to close, I would like to say, Helen Dunk, Fair Planet. Thank you very much, Fair Planet, for partnering with us over the last 10 years. Together, we have been able to achieve a lot. And I know that um, right now, most of the world is still moving in a paradigm that is unsustainable. But I would like to think that 100 years from now, when history is written, that historians will point to a few pioneers, pioneers who came up with a different approach. And these pioneers, I would like to think, were the ones that started things and made all the difference. And I would like to think that hybrid and fair planet will be counted among those pioneers when our 
that when the people 100 years from now are enjoying a society you know that is more fair more inclusive and more sustainable my friends at fair planet everyone in the philippines sends their greetings and their love and their thanks we could not do we could not be where we are without you and we just want to say thank you very very much we look forward to the next 10 years of partnership.